Hello, everyone. This paper describes connection path reselection, CPR, a system that Fastly has been using for over two years to provide transparent, scalable, multipath aware, end to end path failure recovery. CPR follows a long tradition of contributions that span back to the origins of the internet. Back then, the intention was to achieve seamless self-healing at the network layer, so that only a single class of failures would ever be experienced by the transport layer, total network partition. These have to be achieved in the context of a vast number of interconnected networks, each one able to implement its own routing policy. This led to the design of BGP, which has become the main tool to provide path resilience in the internet. Unfortunately, BGP and the Internet of today still can't provide seamless self-healing at the network layer. Large-scale failures and outages that BGP does not fix happen with unfortunate regularity. Volumetric traffic attacks, undersea cable cuts, BGP attacks and misconfigurations, all of these have large-scale effects that affect millions of users and cost millions of dollars. In addition to these huge events, we also have smaller impairments that harm TCP connections and which are never addressed simply because PGP is not even able to detect them. One way in which the internet architecture has changed since the design of BGP is the emergence of edge clouds. These act as intermediaries between application and content providers on one side and a planetary scale set of clients on the other. They provide not only caching and attack protection, but also general purpose computing. So, what can edge clouds do to enhance TCP connection reliability for users? At first glance, it may seem that edge clouds are simply users of the network layer and that they could simply rely on BGP for path reliability. Unfortunately, this is not optimal. BGP converges on timescales proportional to its hold timer, which in practice means minutes rather than seconds. In addition, BGP is unable to detect many failure classes like misconfigurations. One possible improvement would be to develop a performance-aware egress traffic engineering system. If a certain destination prefix experiences degraded performance using a given egress, the automated system will simply move it to a better one. We seem to be getting path failure mitigation for free. Unfortunately, this is not optimal either. Most path impairments are sub-prefix and short-lived, and in these cases, rerouting entire prefixes could be overkill and end up doing more harm than good. In addition, the economics of edge clouds favor commodity switches over programmable ones. Edge cloud pops need to be as close to users as possible, which places them in some of the most expensive real estate on the planet. Spending money on hardware, which does not generate revenue, is unattractive. Finally, it may seem that the ideal solution would be to use a multipath transport protocol. This would allow us to use all available paths, and if one breaks, dynamically shift load to the good ones. Unfortunately, this is ill-suited to the massive reach of edge clouds, which need to serve, essentially, every single client device in existence. Multipath transport protocols, which require client-side support and hence are not widely deployed, are not a good fit. In addition, the dynamic load shift that we mentioned before only helps long-running, established connections. It does not help connections during the three-way handshake. It is also not very useful for very short flows, which are crucial for many edge cloud applications. The design of CPR places the fundamentals of edge clouds front and center. First, edge cloud points of presence must connect to multiple transits so that they can survive outages of individual providers. Second, since edge clouds terminate user transport connections, they have full visibility of their state and performance. And third, since edge clouds are responsible for delivering their customers' traffic to its users, they have a direct economic incentive to improve service reliability. The solution that presents itself is to use transport layer information to drive egress routing. By moving the responsibility of path failure recovery from BGP to TCP, CPR can mitigate problems in the RTO timescale. This means seconds rather than minutes. By operating on individual connections, it can protect all destination prefixes instead of just a few heavy hitters. 
Additionally, since CPR reuses the connection state already available in the host socket table, it does not need to reconstruct it from in-network observations. CPR is not intended to be used for generic performance-aware traffic management, but to complement it. It is a last hope intervention aimed to rescue TCP connections that would otherwise be lost. CPR is a Linux kernel patch that monitors TCP connections, detects when the path associated with a connection has failed, reroutes outbound traffic for that connection, and measures the aggregate effects of rerouting. We now look at the two main functions of CPR, impairment detection and path reselection. The fundamental concept underlying impairment detection in CPR is the stall. For CPR, a stall happens when a TCP connection is unable to make further forward progress because the underlying path has failed. When a stall is detected, CPR will trigger a reroute, moving the connection to a new path that will hopefully allow it to make forward progress again. Note, however, that the precise definition of forward progress will depend on the life cycle stage of the connection. An inbound TCP connection starts with a client sending a SYN packet, initiating a three-way handshake. The server will then reply with a SYNAC. If the outbound path has failed, the SYNAC transmitted by the server will be lost. During the inbound pre-established phase, CPR will declare a stall upon exceeding a threshold of n presumed lost synax. Detection is similar during the outbound pre-established phase. The main difference is that in this case, CPR will count the number of presumed lost SIM packets. Note, however, that since most edge traffic results from inbound connections, this case is less important in practice. During the established phase, CPR triggers a reroute whenever the stream of acknowledgments for freshly sent data is interrupted. CPR marks a connection as making forward progress whenever an acknowledgment is received for data that was sent but had not yet been acknowledged. Before each retransmission, CPR checks for how long a connection has been unable to make forward progress. If this value exceeds a threshold delta, it declares a stall and selects a new egress path. We now move to path reselection. In CPR, each switch peers with multiple upstream providers and forwards BGP updates from all of them to routing daemons on servers. These routing daemons then populate two routing tables. The main table contains a result of applying BGP policy to all routes learned from all peers. It is used for routing traffic under normal circumstances, that is, when path reselection is not active. It is optimized for performance, capacity, and cost. On the other hand, the transits table is populated with all default routes learned from your upstream providers. Because these are default routes, they can be used to route to any destination. CPR uses a reroute counter R to keep track of the number of times that the connection has been rerouted. An IP rule is used to select which table to use based on the value of the reroute counter. For connections that have never stalled, which means that they have never been rerouted and R equals zero, we use the main table. For connections that have stalled at least once, that is, they have been rerouted at least once and R is greater than zero, we use the transits table. With each individual stall, the connection will be rerouted to a different random egress. The specific transit to be used is decided using the ECMP hash of the connection 5 tuple and the reroute counter R. CPR will continue to try to help the connection until it either recovers or terminates naturally. So how does CPR look in action? To measure the effectiveness of CPR, we use an experimental approach. We randomly label some connections as part of a treatment group and the remainder as part of a control group for which path reselection is disabled. On the first graph, we see that the treatment connections experience a higher probability of being healthy. On the second graph, we can see that treatment connections also have better chances of establishing, evidencing connection setup distress for control connections. 
Finally, on the third graph, we can see that treatment connections exhibit a greater chance of closing while healthy rather than when stalled. This means that if connections actually do stall, treatment connections have better chances of recovery. When taken together, these facts show that CPR helps a small but significant proportion of connections, both established and pre-established. CPR helps resolve around 120 impairments like this every day, each with a median duration of about eight minutes. CPR is unabashedly simple and follows in a long tradition of incremental improvements to the internet architecture. Our implementation is trivial to configure, effortless to operate, requires no additional hardware, and takes advantage of transit multi-homing that edge networks need to pay for anyway. By operating at the transport layer, CPR provides faster recovery than BGP. It also helps with a wider array of potential failures on a per-connection basis and without incurring any additional state. It is unilaterally deployable and routinely protects many terabits per second of traffic in production. Thank you for your attention. If you have further questions or comments, we will be happy to hear them.